different people and seeing, looking back now that we're, um, as we, within Canada at least, uh, seem to be getting towards the end of the tunnel, um, looking back and seeing how effectively our supply chains handled all of this uh, that was thrown at them. And uh, I, I'm very glad to see that, that a couple of the people that responded slept like a, uh, like a baby each night. Um, you know, your certificate of completion is in the mail. You guys did the right job, um, did the right work. Um, and, and that is setting the stage and building the infrastructure to support the supply chain in, in terms of disruption and in terms of fluctuating business environments. And, and we've seen some significant changes. Yeah, so, so sorry to jump in there, Nick. I, I was actually quite surprised by 29% of people pointing that out because as we know, even Amazon, who's known for their unbreakable supply chain, so to speak, had issues with it. They had issues, um, but I would say that they took action quickly. Right. Um, and they made changes on the fly um, and continued to perform. Um, here in Canada, I, I saw very little disruption uh, in terms of my activity or my household activity with, with Amazon um, and buy online and compare that to trying to sign up for a click and collect spot from uh, when, with Walmart in the first initial days of the, mm -hmm. of the shutdowns. Um, there were no spots available for, you know, seven, eight days outwards. Um, so I think uh, some companies did a really good job and that, that shows in, in how they uh, are coming out of this. But I did see a couple of responses in at the negative side of, um, you know, seeing the stresses um, and and in some cases also breaking completely. And these are the challenges that we've seen, especially in the food and the essential services, right. um, essential goods. That, that's been an area where I think people were more concerned about the disruptions that happened, whether it be a lack of inventory, uh, transport uh, uh, changes. Um, where the air freight and the container ships, the cancellations resulted in longer uh, lead times and transit times to full out inventory failures and inability to get product out the door just because mm -hmm. of that congestion. Right. So once again, any lessons learned or any personal experiences that folks might have from a business point of view, please chime in. I, I would suggest those people who slept each night like a baby had such a long day at work dealing with so many firefights when they literally got into any horizontal position they slept like a baby because i can't imagine any retailer manufacturer cpg call it what you like involved or non-essential not involved immediately in in the you know the supply chain to get stuff into stores they were canceling orders and shuffling things around like a crazy person so every retailer had you know things going on for, for obvious reasons, like Loblaw, you know, our, our major grocers, Walmart, uh, Canadian Tower, Home Depot, were just, you know, responding to the change, not only the spike in demand, but the change in the mix of demand. So, you know, if demand management systems were not performing particularly well, the supply chain was not performing particularly well because of the sheer disruption. So right. sleeping like like each night like a baby was like, I've done 15 hours, I deserve some <laughs> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so that may be the case. <laughs> so maybe the misinterpreted is that what you're <laughs> sleeping like a baby doesn't always mean that uh, you don't have any problems. I guess that's what you're pointing out, Gary. And I do want to just uh, add another thing. A lot of the times when we think about supply chain, our mind automatically goes to retail. But there's other supply chains, right? So uh, some of my clients in past have been insurance companies. Oh, you mean? Huh? Oh, you mean? Uh, sorry, if you are uh, on the call, please mute yourself if you're not uh, speaking. Otherwise, you're welcome to chime in with a comment. Um, so as I was saying, uh, a lot of the times our mind kind of goes to the retail conversation by thinking about some of the other areas that may not have thought about their supply chain with as much focused view in past. Insurance definitely comes to mind. And in Canada, the way the insurance business typically works is somebody either comes to your house or you meet with them for a coffee and they explain the procedure to you. They explain all the providers and then they get all your information and negotiate that, right? Um, so that's sort of a supply chain. There, there's a person in the middle 
that helps you an agent that helps you guide all that conversation. Um, and that was really impacted by COVID. So a lot of people looking for insurance, uh, let's say exploring those type of solutions because of COVID, were not able to get that service initially. And a lot of uh, folks that I talked to in that space were really struggling. So they would probably come into either their supply chain completely broke or the smoke coming from their gears because they very quickly had to figure out how to either get on Zoom or figure out other ways to do their business.